Hey everyone, this is Abby at Lunar Light Design. I wanted to make a video about how I made the strawberries that I recently posted on Instagram. As far as uh, my techniques go, I feel like this one moves pretty quickly. Normally it takes me a while to get through individual designs. And because I wanted to make an unripe strawberry and maybe one that was just starting to ripen, it seemed like a good time to use the ombre effect to see if that would show through. So on this one, I also added some mermaid flakes at the bottom. Again, I was curious if once I applied the poly gel to the top, if you'd be able to see it, and it turns out you can. I also wasn't sure how clear the ombre would come through, so this one's a little bit scratchy looking, but I don't think you really notice even in the end product, even though you can kind of see some of the, um, the brush strokes. Okay, so on to the strawberry making part. So to begin with, to get the seed placement, uh, the white strawberry was the very first one that I made and I added the beads afterwards to simulate the seeds and it really wasn't the way to go because I was having a hard time lining up where the seeds should be. Uh, this, so then I redid it and figured I'd use a dotting tool to put seeds on first. And that would give me a target once I put the poly gel on. And it works so much better. I appreciate too that once you dent the poly gel, it's even hard to tell if these dots are underneath or on top. It just gives it a cleaner look. So in a semi-meticulous way, I'm trying to line up these dots. It's harder than it looks. At least for me it is. And of course, true to an unripe strawberry, the seeds look green, but as it starts to ripen, the seeds change color. On my original set of strawberries, I used a gold metallic for the seeds and it really made it look like jewels. I thought it was quite pretty. This time around, I wouldn't say I'm going for realism, I'm just trying out some different colors. So I'm using the Tones Acro Gel, or Fashion Gel as they call it, and also some isopropyl alcohol just to keep it from sticking to my brush and the dotting tool. I've also used the Crystal Nails Poly Gel. I can't remember what they're calling that particular product line, but both the Tones and the Crystal Nails seem pretty awesome. I think most of you a lot of experience working with Acrogel. I'm still quite new to it. After coming up with this though, I realized there are so many things a person could do. Even though I know all of you, myself included, want to make this perfect but I have discovered since we're going to be poking the surface, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I understand the need to try to make it so. I 
I picked a medium sized dotting tool because I wanted the larger divots. But I imagine you could use any size of dotting tool. But my goal was to try to push enough material away so that it would really resemble the surface or the skin of a strawberry. And when I first started doing these, I was starting from the center. And I found that as I was making the dots on the side, it would cause the center indents to distort. So now I start with the dots on the side and do the center last and it keeps those indents as circular or as symmetrical as they can be. For the smaller nails, I'm using about a chickpea size of acrogel. You know, I wanted enough thickness so that when the light ref refracted that you get those cool shadows on the surface of the nail and it seems like you want some thickness or depth to be able to do that. So it was at this point that I was trying to figure out what I was going to be doing to the other nails in the set, I ultimately decided on doing some plaids. And of course you can see I went crazy with glitters and chrome powders. Because I mean we have them, right? So you got to use them. Whether it makes sense or not. They're pretty. So here I'm getting ready to paint the little leaves that are going to go on the strawberry and I use a silicon, little silicon pad, but you can use a Ziploc bag. And because the surface of the nail is curved and not flat, I like to basically attach this to a round nail polish bottle or in this case a foil film canister. And then when I paint on it and cure it, whatever I made Ha sometimes has a has a nice little curve to it. In this case, because I'm doing these little leaves, this ended up being a bit of a moot point. But on another strawberry, I painted all the leaves at once so it would span the entire uh, width of the nail, and it did make sense to paint it on a curved surface, and it made it stick better. You'll see soon. I'm using uh, Young Nails, their mission control paint, because once it's cured, it doesn't have a inhibition layer. Although sometimes I paint it a little too thick on the first go and the underside, no matter how much I stick it under the light, doesn't cure all the way, but that's okay. In some ways it's beneficial because when I go to place these for the first try, it allows them to stick a little bit to the nail. And I'm only doing that normally to just get the composition right. So here I had figured out where I wanted the leaves to be. Those aren't glued on yet or attached. And I'm applying just a real thin layer of top coat, of non-white top coat. I don't think it really matters. 
I started out with too much though and I flooded a couple of the of the indents so later I went back with a dotting tool to get some of those opened up again so the clear coat really is just sitting on the very surface not not into the uh, inside of the strawberry dents the seed dents whatever you want to call them I think I realized that this was a pretty inefficient way to do this, but it's the way I'm doing it. So that's what got recorded. I think um, some of the problem here is that, as you can see, the leaves are sticking out and probably would not be conducive to wearing unless you backfilled them with some clear gel. So I ended up getting out some charm gel that I was going to paint on the underside of the leaves. It wasn't very much. And then just by using some saran wrap to hold it down and then cure it, I got those leaves to at least be closer to the surface. So if I was going to make these to wear, I, even if they didn't fully stick, I could go back with some clear builder gel or a thicker gel to enclose that space so it wouldn't catch on anything. But just for decorative purposes, I might have just left the leaves sticking out the way that they were. You know, for a portfolio piece, it doesn't matter. They weren't pretty. So I'm just getting ready to paint the leaves uh, to add some depth to them. I apologize now, I didn't get the whole process, but I'm Right now, just mixing up the different colors that I want. Again, using the Young Nails Mission Control. And I'll do several rounds because I want those leaves to be somewhat thick, kind of make them look like enamel jewelry. Can't really say why I started with the light green, other than I had thought that I would paint on, paint the outside edges and allow some of the light green to show through in the center but once I got these on they were thin enough that it made sense to thicken them up with some more paint and because the edges after they come off that silicon pad are just a little rough I like to go around the edges first with a nice thick line and it rounds them out cleans it up the other benefit of doing this starting with the outline first is if I am using, I wouldn't say a translucent paint, but if it has, if it's just semi-opaque, then once you start to paint a lighter color or even a darker color on top, it, you almost get a blended effect without actually having to do any blending. I think you'll see it soon. And on the first set of strawberries I did, I used a, uh, a jelly paint for the leaf and then a metallic paint for the outside edges to make it look like jewelry, which is quite effective as well. So I realized it might be overkill, but I went over the leaves again just to add some thickness and to blend that dark line, uh, the outline with the center a bit more. And once I cured this, I added uh, some of the light green to introduce some highlights. And once that was all cured, I top coated and added a few white lines 
just as highlights and just as an interest to make those leaves pop a little bit more. Sorry, I didn't catch that on video. And with that, we have the final end result with my plaid nails and a strawberry flower. Thank you, everyone. If you made it this far, I appreciate you being here. Thank you.